Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. Bill, what we're talking about today is the house values along the seacoast. Okay? okay. So basically they're dropping like a rock. And a lot of a lot of these sellers are selling because of emotional. They got hit by two hurricanes, their house is not livable. You know, right before these storms, their house values were like say six, seven hundred thousand, and okay. now they're selling them for 200 or 250. Okay. And these investors are coming in like crazy to to buy them. It's a crazy situation what's going on. And I have my opinion, like one of the properties, one of my properties, you were doing the listing mm -hmm. after these storms, because my area in Hudson got hit, we took it, we decided to take it off the market. So I'm gonna tell you guys why I took it off the market. And I'm gonna wait a couple of years before I sell it again, because a lot's gonna change in the next couple of years. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. The rise and fall of these values of the homes and what's going to happen. In the meantime, do me a favor, if you like this kind of content, consider subscribing. It really helps the channel and it's greatly appreciated. Hit the share and, the, and then give it a thumbs up. So Bill, do you think that these investors are coming in there and a lot of these homes are being bought? Mm -hmm. Okay, are you, you think it's smart what they're doing? From the investor standpoint? Yeah, from the investor yeah. standpoint. The investors, do, aren't, they're not coming down here for no reason. They're coming down here to make money. So, And some of them are from out of state, no less. Of course they are. Yeah. It's not just a floor. They, these, aren't, these investors aren't just the mom and pop investors where they're buying one, two, three, four, five houses for their, their portfolio. These, some of these investors are huge companies, and then they fix and flip them, right? So you know, you've, they're doing this for a reason. And if we're talking about homes that were damaged just in general, in these areas, of course, the values are going to be lower right now. So, you know, you mentioned earlier when we were chatting before we started recording about stilt houses, you said you saw some of yeah, the, so yeah, the stilt the, houses the, coming down. So I understand the values of houses that got destroyed, you know, that they had to cut the sheetrock out four feet, you know, and they had to gut them and they're not livable. So now those values, I saw a whole bunch of them being sold for like two, two twenty because they're mm -hmm. ranches. But then I've been following, you know, before we did this video, I waited a couple of weeks before we did this video so I could see what happens to the market. The still houses, I see 50,000 price, price cuts, 75,000 price cuts on still houses that weren't damaged. Right, so some of that could just be they need to move the house at this point because the market is obviously not the best on coastal properties right now because we just had the hurricanes. So, you know, you look at your holding costs when you're getting, when you were already, if they were already for sale, and you're looking at your holding costs, you do, if you're doing as in your example, $50,000 reduction, but I'm gonna hold it and it's gonna cost me 25,000 to hold it. You know, how much are you actually losing, you know, when you're doing the math out like that. And it's just the, the, vo the volume of people and the, they're just gonna be kind of gun shy right now, I think, coming into the coast. Yeah, but do you think, you know, it's smart to sell the house? I mean, I personally think that, you know, some of these investors, you can't, there's good investors, but there's bad investors too, you yeah. know? And I think the investors are gonna come in and try to be, act like they're your best friend and they're doing you a favor. But at the end of the day, you know, they wanna make a lot of money. And what, 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 are, what are investors going to do? Some of them, I know three of the houses that got condemned, and I talked to the investor because it was one investor that bought these three. Mm -hmm. He's knocking them down. They're gonna put big ones back up. And he's gonna put yeah. still million dollar still houses on Of course. On there. So when you're looking at things long-term like that, in that example, if you're, if you're looking for a short-term turn or you were getting ready to sell your house, you have to make that decision yourself whether or not it's the right time or not. Because you don't know what's gonna happen. Is the market in the short-term gonna keep declining you know, coastally? Because of insurance because, costs or? Because of everything. Yeah. So you're going to have to adjust. Something's going to have to adjust right there. Um, or once these houses start getting purchased and then rebuilt into, like you said, the million dollar and up houses, that's going to change the values of the homes and they're going to go up. Well, that's well. we might as talk about why we took one of my properties off the yeah. market. And there's it, a caveat. So remind me to come back on the right, properties well, we'll, going up. Yeah. Well, the reason why we took the one of my properties off the market it wasn't damaged or anything, but we took it off because we're like, hey, we were selling what, 335, 340? Yep, 335. 335, okay, we were selling for 335. But now, a lot of the houses in my neighborhood, even on my block, got destroyed. So 
a lot of them are going to be knocked down and they're going to be building stilt houses. And now they already built three or four and there's two more going up. Right. Million dollar stilt houses. So we figured out if I could hold on to the property, you know, for another three years, mm -hmm. okay, I think the my value on that property, it's it's hypothetical, but my value on that property probably go from 330, 350 to maybe 600 because you're talking about million dollar houses all around me now. Right, so the more houses that you have that are in that million and up range, the, and then the less that they can purchase a single story ranch to put the million dollar house up, the more valuable your land becomes. So that was the caveat. There's gonna be a cap. So I don't want people that are, you know, that, that listen to us and follow us to think that, okay, well, I've got this single story ranch and then, well, my house is gonna be, let's say it's worth 450,000 today. Well, in five years, it's gonna be worth 800,000. There's a, there's a cap. There is a cap. Just especially. because there's million dollar houses all around you, that doesn't mean that your house value is gonna increase the same because they're not comparable. You know, it, it's not no. a, that, that, you know. It's, it's, it's not apples for apples. No, it, it's definitely an apple and an orange. So that's the caveat that I wanted to address and make sure people understand that you're not comparing the same thing. Your land value goes up, so you're gonna get some increase in value uh, because of that, but it's not gonna be like what you think. Well, let me, let me ask you this question, okay? So if a lot of these people got flooded out twice, okay? Yep. They got flooded out last year and now they just got flooded out again, okay? And this time it was worse. If your house got flooded out, and I'm asking everybody watching this video too, if your house got flooded out twice already, would you go for a third time to rebuild it? If it was me personally? Yeah, you personally. No, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, now no, I would I would probably suck it up and repair the house for that second round and then I would sell it. You would sell it. Mm -hmm. Here's the caveat on on that one. Okay, you said you would fix it up and you would sell it, okay? I talked about this in a different video. There's a recycle of people. So basically, eventually all these houses will either be knocked down still the house will be built, mm -hmm. or the ranches that people invest, even investors buy them and they fix them up, they're all gonna be in, fixed up. Now, out-of-staters are gonna come in, mm -hmm. and I think as time goes past, you know, if uh, six months goes by, a year goes by, this these storms are less and less on people's minds. Oh, of course, it's super fresh right now. That's why, we're, you know, earlier in the video, I said it's, it's gonna be dependent on the time that you're doing, that you're gonna wanna sell. So if you're trying to sell now, cause you have to, I totally understand that. It makes perfect sense. You gotta do what you gotta do. That's the best for you and your situation and your family. But if you can, if you're planning on waiting, you know, these, and you're, you are getting your house rebuilt, you have to decide that because there is gonna be a recycle of people and things will go back to normal and there will be. Think about this. If you're rebuilding your house, single story ranch doesn't matter. If you're rebuilding your house and remodeling, basically, now you've just remodeled that house. So your house gained value. Right. Because let's say it was a 20 year old build, right? Like since the last time you remodeled, so it's, it's outdated. Now it's not. Right. So, you know, you've got new drywall, electrical panels, plumbing, kitchens, baths, all those things that re actually add a lot of value to your house, that's, that happens. I mean, that's happened in areas in the past. So this is yeah, isn't like and then new people move in that aren't having, they don't care. They don't care because they haven't experienced the storm. And so. he, there's a lot of people that just don't care. They don't care about the storms. Right, but the whole thing is, then they get hit. Eventually, if those people live in that, they get hit, and then they have to rebuild. It's yeah. fresh to them, and then they'll sell it to somebody else from out of state. It's like an endless cycle. That's what I'm trying to say. Right, but I mean, like if we look at the cycles, like my house when I grew up, it still hasn't been damaged from a storm. Like what the house I grew up on. Yeah. It to this day, after even all these storms, it still has not received. It has not right. gotten damaged. But, but that. right now, they have like a 49% rule or a 50% rule. If there's so much damage, you have to change it to current codes or something. I don't know all the details. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, you know, so some of those houses are going to be, have to be updated quite a bit. But my point is, those people that are living in there now, they're probably going to fix them up. Or do you think that, so you're saying you would fix yours up and then sell it, not sell it the way it is to no, an investor. I'd fix it up and sell it. 
But my situation is different. I have the ability to do the work. I would have insurance already because we're on the. If you're talking a coastal house, I would have insurance on it, so I would get the insurance money. There's a lot of the construction work that I can do myself, so it would save. And I would also make sure that my insurance had been updated enough to. Because this is a good point too, that it, your insurance every couple of years you speak with your um, your agent to make sure that your rebuild cost is kept up with inflation and everything else, yeah, so you cost. have enough money to rebuild your house. So th this video is about the value of coastal homes, the fall and rise or okay. the rise and fall. So you basically, these homes that are destroyed right now, that property, okay, may not be that particular home, but that property within three to five years, it's gonna be worth a lot more money. Absolutely, just look at history. This isn't even, we have to go back very far. Okay. Look at every other area that's had a, a storm in the state of Florida where they've rebuilt take South Florida as an example. Now oh, I know yeah. that people go, oh, the condos and da, 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 and this market and the other. But the reason those condos are going out and there's issues, look at the ultra luxury condos that are going in there, the ultra luxury homes that have gone in there over the years, you know, over the last 20, 30 plus years. The, it's the ultra rich that live there and the values have gone through the roof everywhere. Same thing, just moving on up the coast. Coastal properties never used to be this expensive, and now they are. Look at, like, just in Hudson as an example, as it goes through gentrification, you know, we've got... Yeah, why don't you explain what gentrification is? So it's basically when you have a lower income, lower, lower value properties, houses that are older, falling apart, it needs love. Then people come in and they start buying those properties up and they knock them down and then they start bringing in infrastructure, um, you know, new roads, new lights, sewers, new homes. They start tearing down the, like the dilapidated homes per se. And then they're putting up new construction homes uh, or, you know, fix and flip kind of deals. And then that brings up the value overall of the general area. Yeah, some of the properties I bought in the past, you know, people were laughing at me like, why are you buying property there? Yeah. But now forget about it. Yeah. You know, I'm getting offers on those properties, but now I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna hold on to it for another three, four years because there's so much building going on and they're building these beautiful stilt houses that yeah. are going to be a million plus and that's all i'm going to be surrounded by exactly you know and this has happened everywhere this is not just you know coastal safety harbor's gone through it dunedin's gone through it um dunedin we used to make i mean we're talking 30 plus years back mm -hmm. we used to kind of make fun of people for buying in dunedin and then now you couldn't you you can't keep people away from dunedin because it's awesome same thing with Safety Harbor. Yeah, it's like golf cart communities and stuff. There's a video on Dunedin and I did. But what do you tell the people that just don't care, want to get out? They're just, just emotionally stressed, you know? Regardless of the point or the reason why you want to get out, if it's just your time, right? You just decided we're done with this, whatever the case is for you. If, if it's time to sell, it's time to sell. Don't take the first offer that comes to your door. Sometimes these investors I hear, um, they, they will super undercut you because they're trying to make the most of your money. And then to be frank, they're gonna try to take advantage of you because of the situation. Well, and they how, think you're how do you determine the value when every house, you know, and I gotta tell you guys a funny story too. Every house is destroyed in your two or three block area. How do you come up, like if they say, okay, Bill. <laughs> That's a tough one. What, what should I sell this house for? Um, everything is destroyed. I had to cut the sheetrock four feet up and you know, it needs a new, all new outlets and each a new electrical panel, whatever. What do you do? You base it just on the land? How do you, how do you even yeah, Definitely them? you take a look at the land is, is a big one. You got to look at the going rate too for whatever all the other investors are doing. They generally stay in the same kind of ballpark. You know, they'll, they'll be in the same realm. Um, and shop the investors. I would say shop the investors. If you're shopping the investors, like I have a platform that I can put a property out and you'll get three or four different bids from three or four different investment groups. Oh, that's pretty good. And so they just kind of take a look at the so area. Do you have that now? Well. Yeah. So somebody well, yeah, watching can, this video? Yep, yep, they can go out. And what they do is, because they're gonna also look at things on a uh, more of a, for lack of a better description, perceived value for future. Mm -hmm. You know, because they want to make a certain money. They have, it's called a buy box and they want to stay within it, but because they have to fix and flip the house. You know, you know, uh, what's not funny is everybody got, we just got our tax bill here. Okay. And everybody's taxes went up. These people all got their tax bills, mm -hmm. you know, and they, their homes aren't, aren't livable. 
and all their taxes went up and the state's saying you still have to pay the taxes. Well, yeah. So, so they're getting tax bills that are like a lot higher than they were last year. And, you know, and the county and the state say, no, because of our rules, you still have to pay the property taxes. They should, don't you think they should give like people a break if the house is freaking destroyed or something? I know you could call them. I would say, well, you can get a revaluation, but I don't know how that would work with, because you're supposed to fix the house again. Right. You know, because you've got insurance money coming in to an extent. Hopefully. Well, a lot of people. Uh, well, they I mean, don't have flood. They have insurance, but they don't have flood insurance. Yeah, like how many people have we talked to and right. they said that, oh, we had hurricane insurance, but we didn't have flood insurance. Right. And that's the unfortunate thing, which this is where, you know, we've talked about in other videos that this is kind of one of those governmental. I know this is a sensitive subject, but bear with me. Um, you know, the, the government does have to step in a little bit when it comes to these very unicorn situations like this, where there was so much flooding, just kind of unprecedented. I know that's a, a hot topic too, but at the end of the day, this really was. From somebody who grew up and lived here, this is, we've never seen this before, not in my years on this no. earth. And so they, the news can say whatever, oh, it's the hundred year, whatever, but I'm telling you in my 50 years, I've never seen this. Right. So it's, and I've never left Tarpon, Clearwater, Largo. And they, at some point, hopefully they'll do step in and do something about it. That's the only thing. I mean, obviously there's greater minds than mine that are at work at this. Yeah, but it's just like, you know, then why even bother having insurance? The way I look at it is yeah, like- But not everybody can afford to own their own house outright. Right, but I'm just, what I'm saying too is if the government says, don't worry about it, if you get flooded, we're gonna come in and, and take care of you. That's just going to tell everybody, uh, I'm not even bothering getting insurance because I'll... No, I'm not saying from an insurance. You were talking about taxes. Oh, taxes, you yeah. Were you weren't talking about insurance. You were talking about taxes. Yeah. So I'm saying that if you're, you know, on the precedent on the precedent of what you were saying with taxes, that the government could come in and say something like, listen... The state government, yeah. Yeah, the state, you could say, hey, maybe there's a stay at your taxes. The increase isn't going to happen for a year. Something along those lines. Yeah, you yeah, know, no, they should help they, you I, out. I, I, I agree with that. Yeah. But at the, at the end of the day, you know, the values are down right now dramatically, more than 50% because it's fresh, all the homes are destroyed. Wait, you, wait, 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 back up. You said the values are down more than 50%? On Zillow, when I'm going down to the homes prices, yeah, they're going down. That's Some of these houses that were five, 600,000 are selling now for 220. Okay, the damaged houses then. Yeah, the damaged okay, houses. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's, so I don't want people to get confused that property values are down 50% in, this, in the area. No, of I'm the talking state. about these, da these damaged houses. But these that damaged, makes sense because yeah. the house isn't a house anymore. It, it, you can't live in it. So you, right. you can't obviously charge the what you know to move in. You can't even get a mortgage on it. You have to buy it cash. You can't get a mortgage on a house that's not livable. Right. So my point is, if you are able to hold on to it, you know, even yeah. though it's down that much, I think that if you're able to fix it, or I think that if somehow, because that's what investors are going to do, or, you know, best is if you can knock it down and put a stilt house up, if, you, if you're able to, I'm not saying it's cheap, but the values are going to go up no matter what, whether you fix it up. Or, of course they are. Or the, you know, that's and, my, my point. Yeah, and that's what the investors are doing. They're looking at the perceived value of it in the future. You know, there are loan programs out there where they're basically renovation loans. You get a rental loan, and then it's on the perceived value of what it, your loan is based on the perceived value of what it will be. And they, they appraise it, and they look at what the home's value after it's repaired. So they take other homes that are comparable, meaning that are remodeled, and then the same size and area and then that's how they come up with their number and that's what the investors are doing yeah and that's why i'm saying there's, there's plenty of investors out there and you know especially don't talk to investors that are saying hey you got here's an offer you got 24 hours 48 hours oh, to figure God, it out please don't that's Just, bs you know let's walk away from those but that's it i mean i know your homes a lot of people you know living on the coast so it's always gonna be buyers you know i think in the long term Yes, the values are down now, but they're going to be back up. Anyways, that's today's video. Bill, you have anything to add to this? Nope, I think we're good there. Um, just be careful with whatever you do. And if there's any questions or anything, just call, you yeah, know, and call ask. Us. And well, not me, I'm not a realtor, but <laughs> call him. <laughs> but I mean, still, you know, you still have a good mind for this stuff. So, yeah. you know, you're, you're allowed to talk about things. You're, you know, it's it's not like you're I'll give you my house. opinion on the, on the yeah. inspection part of it. It's just that's it and just 
All right, check out this video over here. I picked it out just for you guys. And do me a favor, subscribe. It really helps out the channel and it's greatly appreciated. We'll talk to you in the next one. Thank you and have a great day. See you on the next video. Bye. Thanks.